Good evening and welcome back to Right Side Now. I'm Liz Willis and tonight RSBN will bring you real news right now. President Trump's travel ban, the Super Bowl controversy, Senate confirmations, terrorism in Turkey, and the dark web. That's what we'll be talking about today. Stay tuned. Let's begin with an update on President Trump's travel ban. America is waiting for the Ninth Circuit Court to issue its ruling on President Trump's travel ban. The deadline for submitting briefs passed this afternoon, and the ruling could come at any time. The Justice Department is appealing the ruling of Judge James L. Robart's ruling on Friday, which temporarily halted enforcement of the travel ban. President Trump shared his thoughts on the matter on Twitter, saying, quote, The judge opens up our country to potential terrorists and others that do not have our best interests at heart. Bad people are very happy. And in another tweet, he said, Just cannot believe a judge would put our country in such peril. If something happens, blame him and the court system. People pouring in, bad. No matter what the circuit court decides about the ruling, many observers expect the case to ultimately be decided by the Supreme Court. The circuit court decision is important, however, because if the Supreme Court were to deadlock on the travel ban case, then the precedent set at the circuit court level would be upheld. We'll keep you updated here on Right Side Now and let you know if anything changes and as soon as we hear anything about the circuit court decision. And how about that game last night? In case you missed it, the New England Patriots defeated the Atlanta Falcons 34-28 to in Super Bowl 51, yesterday in an incredible comeback victory. The Patriots rallied from a 25-point deficit in the third quarter and tied up the game at the end of the fourth. This forced the Super Bowl into overtime for the first time in franchise history, and Tom Brady and Bill Belichick became the first quarterback and coach to win five Super Bowls. Some are calling yesterday's game the most exciting Super Bowl ever. But plenty of excitement was also created by this year's Super Bowl advertisements. Several of the ads generated controversy for appearing to make political statements. For example, in an Audi clip, a father worried that his little girl won't make equal pay for equal work. The ad ends with Audi saying they support equal pay for equal work. As Tommy Lahren points out in her tweet, however, equal pay for equal work has been part of American law since 1963. Lahren tweeted, hey Audi, the Equal Pay Act was passed in 1963. Men and women get equal pay for equal work. Stop trying to capitalize on political ignorance. Another controversial ad was this ad was an ad from 84 Lumber. The ad showed a Mexican mother and daughter trying to illegally cross the border into the United States, eventually entering and portrayed them sympathetically. Some viewers, however, were not so sympathetic. For example, Trump 2020 hashtag KAG tweeted, I will be closing my commercial account with 84 Lumber. Hopefully many other patriots will do the same. Do not support illegal immigration. And finally, Budweiser advertisements portrayed the co-founder, Adolphus Bush, immigrating from Germany to America in the 1800s and having to overcome lots of anti-immigrant sentiment from Americans. However, according to an expert on the history of Budweiser, the commercial was historically inaccurate. William Nilsedetter, author of Bitter Brood, The Rise and Fall of Anheuser-Busch and America's King of Beer, says Bush came from a well-to-do family and it would be highly doubtful that he encountered the intense anti-immigrant prejudice portrayed in the ad. In response to the advertisement, some Americans began a campaign for a Budweiser boycott. For example, Lilo Juicy tweeted, Never drinking at Budweiser. You should respect the American president. Instead, you mock with liberal propaganda. Hashtag boycott Budweiser. Now let's talk about the halftime show. I know I'm not the only one who was surprised that Lady Gaga did not make her Super Bowl halftime performance into a political propaganda message. Lady Gaga, who had campaigned for Hillary Clinton and has protested against President Trump, did a halftime show free of any political statements. While some were thankful that Gaga left politics out of her performance, many at left-wing media outlets were upset. For example, Chris Mitchell of the Washington Post wrote, with a forceful elegance, Beyonce, Beyonce had set a precedent for what could be done on this stage, musically and politically, by comparison, Gaga whiffed. And the Los Angeles Times review of the halftime show was entitled, Lady Gaga Misses Her Super Bowl Moment to Say Something Profound. Well, Lady Gaga, I think you looked great and your talent is unquestionable. You were hired to entertain the crowd and that is exactly what you did. Now moving on from the Super Bowl and back to politics, Senate Democrats are promising to talk all night tonight as a protest against Education Secretary nominee Betsy DeVos. 
The Senate began debating DeVos's nomination this morning, and a vote on DeVos is expected tomorrow. Senator Bob Casey tweeted out, For the next 24 hours, at Senate Dems will hashtag hold the floor to oppose the nomination of Betsy DeVos. While two Republican senators have said they will oppose DeVos, Democrats need three Republicans to prevent the confirmation. And this far, there's no sign that any other Republican will oppose DeVos. If the Democrats can't get an additional vote from the Republican side, then the vote will be a 50-50 tie, and Vice President Mike Pence will cast the deciding vote to confirm DeVos. The confirmation vote for Gen General nominee Jeff Sessions might also be held later this week. Republicans are holding the vote on se Sessions after the vote on DeVos because Sessions is currently a senator, and his vote is needed to confirm DeVos. If he were confirmed as Attorney General, his Senate seat would be vacant until a replacement was in place. So Republicans are having Senator Sessions vote for DeVos first before himself being voted in as Attorney General. Sessions is expected to be confirmed in the Senate without any problem. And after Sessions, expect confirmation votes on Mick Mulvaney for Director of Office of Management and Budget, Tom Price for Secretary of Health and Human Services, and Scott Pruitt as head of the EPA. And Turkey is stepping up security. Yesterday, Turkish police arrested hundreds of suspect, suspected ISIS members in a huge anti-terror raid across the country. It was the largest raid ever of this kind in Turkey. The country has been having major national security issues recently. Turkey has been hit with multiple terrorist attacks linked to ISIS, including a New Year's shooting at a nightclub that killed nearly 40 people. It's unclear what will happen next for the arrested suspects. And Turkey isn't the only one cracking down. Visitors to more than 10,000 dark web websites were greeted with an alarming announcement this morning saying, Hello, Freedom Hosting 2, you have been hacked. A group that affiliates itself with Anonymous has compromised servers at Freedom Hosting 2, which is a popular service for hosting websites accessible only through Tor or the dark web. In the message, the group offers to sell the compromised data back to Freedom Hosting in exchange for 0.1 Bitcoin or just over $100. The Verge.com wrote that the hackers claim that child pornography made up more than half of the data on the servers and said it is impossible to verify the claim without seeing the data itself, but that it is consistent with what they know about previous dark web hosting companies. All right, well now let's take a few minutes to share some good news. Last week, my producer Brandon and I took a trip to Lee County Humane Society and met a sweet black lab mix named Leroy with a story that is sure to tug at your heartstrings. Enjoy the clip and stay tuned for a visit from RSBN's very own Steve Luckner. And you can follow my producer Brandon at Colorado Raven on Twitter. Brandon here with Right Side Broadcasting, and here we are at the Lee County Humane Society where we're going to see some nice cute kitties and some nice puppies. And the cat want to get down, but that's okay because we're going to have some fun, especially with this one right here. Hey. We're going to talk about some nice kitties, but first, let's go ahead and talk about this awesome doggy we bought the grade to play with. Asu, who is, we're at the Lee County Humane Society, where they have awesome cats, awesome dogs, awesome environment. And what we're going to do right now is talk to Asu here and our friend Leroy, who is awesome. Leroy right here has been my friend. He's smelling me. He says I'm great and I'm awesome. But instead of just focusing on me, let's talk about this great humane society. Before that, there was not anywhere for stray animals to go. Um, and then we built our location here in the 90s, and we've been here ever since. Mission is basically to, you know, take, have, a, have a safe place for animals to go when they're found or when their owners can no longer care for them, and to um, reduce, oh, where are you going? Reduce uh, pet overpopulation and find homes for all the animals that come in. Leroy is a four and a half year old lab mix. And he originally came to us in August. He was found as a stray and nobody claimed him. Um, he was also heartworm positive. Last year, we actually ended the year with a 91% life release rate. So these days, um, basically anybody who's healthy, treatable, you know, and likes people, you know, 
even if they don't, honestly. Um, we work really hard to get all the animals out the door. We have volunteers that come. We also have staff members, um, but really we couldn't do what we do without the volunteers because they come and um, walk the dogs, help us clean, um, help us with adoptions and everything like that. Any girl. Oh. There you go. Got it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching that clip from Lee County Humane Society. Keep in mind that all those animals you saw are available for adoption at Lee County Humane Society in Auburn, Alabama. All right, well, thanks for joining us. We now have Steve Luckner in the building. So, Steve, how's it going? Were you able to watch the Super Bowl last I night? I was able to watch it. I should say, first of all, by the way, if anybody has any questions or comments, since I'm here with my iPad, they can write in uh, at Luckner on Twitter, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R, for me or for Liz. And if you write in soon, maybe before the end of the show, we'll look at this and see your comment and read it or read your question. Yeah, we would love to. So you asked me if I watched the Super Bowl. The answer is yes. I ended up watching it in this office. If people watch the office cam, they might have seen me watching it here. Uh, but don't feel bad for me. The reason I watched it here, there's two reasons. First of all, my stuff isn't here yet, so I'm living like a, like a, I'm li I'm living like a squatter. Like Still? In, in an empty, yeah, but it's supposed to come tomorrow morning. Okay, um, okay. But also, there's no TV in my place. But also, I wanted to hear the game. And uh, actually, being here alone, usually like I'll go to a party or something, and being here alone and being able to like listen to the announcers, it was such a good experience. And I really think what should happen is on Super Bowl Sunday, everybody should go to their Super Bowl parties, but don't watch the game. And then after the party, you go home and you watch the <laughs> game by yourself and you get to hear everything. So it's like the best of both worlds. Or you could just not go to a party and sit on your couch like I did. Well, yeah, but you, you were with people. Two. Okay, so that sounds like a party to we, me. There was no noise or anything. It was pretty calm. It was it was nice. Okay. I actually got to watch some football, and it helped me to understand it better because I am definitely not a whiz at that right So you now. had no rooting interest in the game whatsoever? I was interested in the Falcons. I'm from Atlanta, so it was just something. I, I'm not going to lie. I have not watched them a lot. But being from Atlanta, I love the city, and it would have been great to see the underdogs win. So you do realize that they lost, even though you don't know the rules of the game? I, do, I know they lost. Okay. I got anxiety in the fourth quarter, so I said, I'm going to take a shower, and I told my brothers to let me know what happened. And when I came out, it was overtime, and all of a sudden, it was over after Maybe that. Maybe you jinxed them by taking a shower. Well, from now on, I just want to shower. How's okay, that's, that? a, that's great. <laughs> Done. Uh, so, hey, you know, I want to want we should talk about is because you and I were talking before about the Super Bowl ads. Yes, yes, the Super Bowl ads. So, so the Super Bowl ads. Um, I thought, well, one I wanted to talk about, because I, I just heard you talking about them on the show, and it got me thinking about them. But one I want to talk about was the 84 Lumber ad. So that was the one. If people there haven't seen it, it's worth going and watching it. But it's the one where, like, it's like the six, well, they show the six minute version at their website. I think the right. online, the regular version they ran during the uh, Super Bowl is like a minute or two. Yep, but anyways. 90, 90 second ad last night. And it shows like a, a, a woman, a Mexican presumably woman and her daughter like illegally try, like making the long trip and trying to enter the country. Presumably. It showed just enough to raise a lot of controversy and to, it allowed you to tell you to go watch the rest of it on their website and the web website crashed last night so a lot of people were not able to see the full six minutes. So clip. tell them what happens at the end. So so the, the part they might have seen is the woman like gets her daughter up early and they say goodbye to everybody and they start walking through the desert and stuff and then what happens? So. I did not watch the full six minute, but I did. I read all about it. Oh, yeah. And um, what the company intended to do was to show them go through a intended to do. I'm not sure. Um, what they're saying is that they intended to promote legal immigration and documented immigration, and that they had them going through a door, which they so say they hit they hit the yeah. big border wall, which is supposedly like Trump's big wall at the border, and and the mother cries with the daughter, and you think like they're not going to make it, but then as you say, they find a wooden door, and then they go through. I, I don't know how that's now, supposed to represent legal immigration because it. Well, I guess what they did is they also show they seem to show an American dude with like tools and wood in the back of his car, a white dude. And it seemed like maybe he built the door. But anyways, my, my thought here, the, my, my thought, regardless of whether the ad makes total sense or not, and all, well, <laughs> my, my first thought is that like this whole thing that 84 Lumber maybe has no political views on this whatsoever and they were just trying to get attention because I had never heard of 84 Lumber. I'm not even sure if it's a real company actually. Yeah, I know I don't either. And if, if that's their goal, they did a great job, but it Unfortunately for them, a lot of it is negative backlash. Right, and well, and I also think so. L let's assume that they that they were trying to be sort of anti-Trump in it. I mean, maybe they weren't, but there's plenty of ads like this. There's other ads that that do this. So I guess my issue was, uh, so so the ad tries to portray this illegal immigrant mom and the daughter very sympathetically, and like look at how you know it's, they're really struggling and they're trying to get through the wall and they're working hard and then they get to the wall and no one will let them in and. 
and I, the underlying message is a message that I, I notice a lot coming from the left, which is that like if you're anti uh, illegal immigration, then you have no sympathy for these people. And if you have sympathy for any of these people, you can't be anti-illegal immigration. But I don't think that's true. I think there's plenty of people who really do feel bad for like an immigrant mother who's trying to help her daughter get to this country and doing all she can to like better her life and her kid's life. But they just say, look, I feel bad for that person, but we need to keep our borders secure. And it's like, I feel like the left it has this view like you can't feel if hey Trump people you're not sympathetic to these people at all they, but I think they are sympathetic. They want to portray the right as just heartless but that's not true. I have to they people care they just want everything done with checks and balances and they want it done legally and correct. Yeah and it's not I, I, I think you can just because you want the border to be strong doesn't mean like you're a heartless robot who doesn't care about people who can't get in. It's just there's it, people or, or are, you know, you're racist they think if you want the border the wall done then you're racist. Yes, that's true too. Exactly. And it, you know, it's similar to the travel ban stuff. Like the travel ban, when Trump came out with the travel ban, I would see posts on Twitter where somebody would say like something like, uh, this is my brother-in-law. He is an Iranian scientist and he has a visa to come here and his wife and kids are already here and now he can't get in thanks to the ban. And the idea is like that people who are for the ban won't be sympathetic. But, but somebody... The thing about the thing is that like there's a lot of people who are for the ban who have sympathy. The purpose of the ban is not to keep anyone who's for the ban pretty much knows that like some of the refugees and immigrants are going to be really good people. The point is though we can't exactly tell yet which ones are good and bad. Let's keep them out until we can figure out a foolproof system. But I, I mean, I don't think, I certainly think the vast majority of people, if not all the people who support the ban, like acknowledge that some of the immigrants and refugees are good. Yeah. So showing that, there's, showing that there's one good immigrant or refugee that's kept out does not show that the ban is a bad idea. That's what I wanted to say about that. I, I, it's sort of a little bit off from the uh, from the original ad, but I think it's sort of connected. So, yeah, so overall, we uh, I'd say we just don't really think it was the most successful. I, well, we think it was successful. Successful in getting attention, but it, for does, this company. it doesn't make that much sense for yes. what for what they're saying. They might have not wanted it to make much sense, so people like us. Would they might have wanted the controversy, yes. which in that case would be a marketing genius. Which so. ad would you like to talk about next? Hmm. Let's see. Take a pick. Audi. Let's talk about Audi. So Audi's ad was about a little girl whose father was worried that she would not um, experience equality as a woman. And, and uh, pay. And, yeah, especially. equality and pay, and that she would never be as good as a man. And I, I don't, I've never experienced that as a woman. I have grown up strong, um, and I've, ne I've never personally experienced um, inequality or in pay. I just think that's ridiculous. And like Tommy Lahren said, in 1963, the Equality Act was passed. There are different jobs for men and women, but overall... Let me, uh, yeah, let me ask you about this. So you're a woman, so I can ask, oh, yeah, yes. I do this because I'm not a woman. I don't know. Did you so, assume my gender? I assumed you, yes, I, I assumed you were a woman. Uh, you've never told me otherwise. So, <laughs> uh, so there is this position among some on the left that, uh, that even here in 2017, society is just this patriarchy and it's really organized, to lo organized in a way that men have all the advantage and women are systematically deprived of equal play and equality. Do you, in your life, have you really felt that? No, I am not. Um, I'm from a family where my mom works, my dad works, and I knew from day one that I better have a job. So I'm here at work. I'm sitting right next to Steve. We're doing the same job, and I get treated fairly every day. Wait, what do you get paid? Can you explain what you get paid? Just tell me what you get paid. I don't think so. Oh. I think maybe I, I higher think, than I think you, so more, maybe. That was my worry. I think it might be more than me. I think I should be complaining. So then he can complain and maybe make a commercial. And Audi's board of executives is all men. So maybe if they wanted to be all this equal act, they could have thrown some women in there. I mean, I, this is another case where I personally think that the board of Audi, that the people who run Audi have no real view on this. It's just these, these things are advertisements. They're yes. done for business reasons. And they think like, well, they probably did a demographic study of our customers are the kind of liberal people who are going to go for this. This uh, stuff about you know male dominance and stuff like that. I should I should also say uh, I actually uh, you know I want to do a little research on this and I, I, I read a story on CNN.com. So it certainly is not a conservative rag CNN.com. Uh, but this recent there was a story on CNN.com I read from last year which which cited a survey which said um, that women compared to men in the same jobs basically make ninety five women overall make ninety five cents for every dollar men makes 
mimics. Mm -hmm. But it also said that like there's widespread debate on what the five cent difference, what's causing it. So on the one hand, it could be sexism, but on the other hand, there could be factors like women don't negotiate as high raises as men do, or women choose flexibility over higher pay. So there's certainly no it's a it's open question whether this small pay gap is really a result of sexism and i personally don't think like the audi company like in the last year has done like scholarly research to really undercover the real uh a truth about this. So I, I question the premise of the uh, campaign. Yeah, I think they were just looking for a hot topic and they jumped on equality and they threw it in there. Personally, I have no stronger desire to purchase an Audi than I might have had before. Do you think they don't it care? Didn't work on me. Do you think they don't care about, like, say, conserv more people who, maybe cons more conservative viewers who might be offended by the ad? Do you think that they just don't care about that? No, I don't think they care. I think they were just looking to uh, rifle some people and um, get them going, get some controversy going. Okay. It looks like a lot of the advertisers were going for that this year. They would subliminally put in their political messages. Okay. I don't disagree with you. All right, what else, what else should we talk about next? We'll come Did on. you see the Mr. Clean commercial? Well, the Mr. Clean commercial, I have, <laughs> I have a view about that one. <laughs> Let's hear it, Steve. Do you want me to describe the ad or do you want to describe the ad? Um, I can try to describe it, and you can probably do it better. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do it then. So the Mr. Clean commercial is there's a woman, like a housewife, who's, what, 35 or something, and she's about to clean her place, and then uh, animated Mr. Clean comes in, and he's like a 55-year-old dude with really tight, he's like ripped, but he's 55. It's Mr. Clean. But he's 55, but he's really tight pants, yeah. tight white pants. <laughs> and and he has, piercings. he's bald, and he has piercings and a white eyebrows. And she, like, falls in love with this guy who's just cleaning. And to me, the big... We talked about how there, I thought there were false premises in uh, the 84 Lumber ad and the Audi ad. The false premise to me of this ad is that women go crazy over 55-year-old 55 55-year-old 55 bald men with tight white pants and piercings and uh, white eyebrows. Yeah, that is kind now, of Now, I'm not a woman, so I, I might not know this. I might be wrong about what women like. You can speak to this more than me. Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't. I didn't go crazy for it, but uh, it, was, it was a funny ad. It was playful, and... It, Yes. Yeah, it was good. Mr. Clean looks like a good product. It definitely was a spin on the normal one where he would show up in a kitchen. Now he's kind of seducing the housewife, and um, it looked in the commercial that it worked. But uh, yeah, it was it was funny. It was a, it was a fun one in in contrast with all the political ones. These are all online, there. by the way. If you want to go watch them, uh, they, you can go find them. So. We would have clipped them for you, but some copyright legal issues. Little copyright <laughs> stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What else should we talk about? Um, how about the fact that Lady Ga Let's talk about Lady Gaga's oh, performance. Yeah. She was, apparently she raised over 5 million tweets during her Super Bowl halftime performance. So she definitely got the crowd going and I think she did a great job. She, um, I did not think that there were any political messages, but according to some news networks, apparently I was blind and I missed all of them. Um, this land in your, is your land. Apparently that is now um, completely um, a message saying that we all belong together. And it was anti-Trump's immigration ban. And I you said you found some article that said, that claimed that her singing Born This Way was a political yes. statement. It was, um, it was a, uh, by her singing Born This Way, it was an anti-LGBTQ, um, well, it was anti-Trump's beliefs on LGBTQ, but Trump is for, he's for LGBTQ communities. He told everyone last week that he was not revoking that order that Obama put into place. So I'm not sure why people still think that he is so against it when um, he's come out at the national convention saying that he stands with them and he won't be revoking their rights. And uh, good point. Also, it's one of her hits, so she had to play it. Yeah, it's a great song. I think she she made a statement by not making a statement. I feel like among her, I mean, she uh, chose to unify instead of divide for once. A performer has. Just finally. It's a bold move because because her audience, her target audience, the people who are real fans were like really they want her to make a statement. So that, that that she was she did she actually that was like a bold move. Like she risked angering her fans to not make a statement. So I thought and that I was And they got a lot of weird. viewers in. I know my mom was driving last night and she tuned in just for the halftime show because she was waiting for Lady mm. Gaga to do something crazy. Everyone thought she was gonna do something crazy, so everyone tuned in. Well she did that one crazy thing at the end where she jumped off to catch the football, which I thought was kinda crazy. Yeah, they I said, kinda like that. They, ending, said, they said the halftime commercial was something or show was something like a Spider-Man tryout because she was like ah. flying and flipping around. I saw a good tweet that said this is what Falcons fans are like right now and it showed her <laughs> jumping off into, no into nothingness. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I want to talk about one or two more of the ads. I want to talk about the Febreze ad. Can we talk about that? I'm going to let you talk about that, Steve. So you the, seemed pretty passionate yeah, about Yeah, I have some very strong feelings about the Febreze ad. So the Febreze ad is that, so Febreze, if people don't know, it's that it's just, you spray it and it makes it's things smell, smell nice. It's smell good, yeah. yeah. Uh, so in the Febreze ad, the whole premise of the ad is like is that 
people, it shows people like eating and drinking during the first part of, uh, just eating, not even drinking, just people eating during yeah. the first part of the game, Lots first half. And it shows people holding it in. It talks about them holding it in. And then it basically says like, on Super Bowl Sunday, we hold it in until halftime, then we all run to the bathroom. And then we need to all yeah. use Febreze because it smells bad. Now, this to me, it's, it's, it's such a false premise because uh, people, what, a couple things. People aren't holding in number two, they're holding in number one. That's one thing. Also, in the commercial, it shows people eating, but like you don't digest food that fast. If you eat like in the mm -hmm. first quarter, you're not gonna have to go number two an hour later. Maybe you will if you have some kind of special issue, <laughs> but the average person won't. So that's a false premise. And it, it felt to me like they came up with a really good idea for like an ad for like toilets. And in like and when they were like in the ad in the advertising agency, it would have been a good place for toilet like toilet paper because a lot of people do use the restroom during those hours, but it's not necessarily what Febreze was saying as number two. Right, to, to, to Febreze was going for number two. They were saying everybody's taking number two at halftime. And so I think it was the kind of thing where somebody in the ad ag agency should have said like, this is a great idea for an ad, but Febreze is the wrong product. Too bad we can't use it. But they just love the idea so much they went with it even though it makes no sense. Um, if you haven't seen the ad, I would uh, go, go online, watch the full two minute version and maybe you'll be as infuriated as I am about the false premise of this ad. I just thought it was kind of just disturbing. It focused an entire commercial on using the restroom and uh I didn't like it. Also, it shows people like holding in, like crossing. I don't know if you can see, but I'm crossing my legs right now. Yeah. But like, you don't hold sitting in number like two a, by crossing like your lady. legs. I don't think. Anyways, enough about number two talk. It's more yeah, than please. I've ever done on this network before. And probably, <laughs> I, I don't want to do any ever again. It. Well, it's this one day I can talk about number two. So it was my big chance. Uh, hey, oh, and the last one, I thought there was one more we wanted yes, to talk about. Yes, there was the Kia commercial with Melissa McCarthy. Oh, so what did you think about that commercial? I thought it was funny. I think Melissa McCarthy is a funny actress. Um, she. It's, it's a commercial where she's like she's like doing different environmental cause things like she's being a tree hugger and then she's, she's saving like the whales saving the whale. and getting th and thrown off the ship into the water. She's getting cut down from a tree. Right. She gets comically sort of injured and destroyed in every 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 single one of these things scenarios. The problem is to me it just it's basically like they stole it they stole the Wiley e. Coyote act from the Bugs Bunny cartoons. <laughs> if anybody's old enough to see those, it's, it really felt weird like they, they were just having to be Wiley e. Coyote. So I couldn't get over that part of it. But at least they weren't claiming that she held in uh, to go number two at halftime. Right, right. Because that would have been really bad. All right, cool. Well, thank you, Steve. Oh, I got to see if anybody oh. wrote into us. Hold okay. on. We almost. All right, so let's see if anybody wrote into us. Uh, I, I only said it once, so let's see. Oh, hold on. We have we have a comment. Um, we have. I don't think we have anything. I forgot to say it more. Anyways, let me say this. If you uh, tonight would like to give us any comments on the show, uh, go to at Lookner. Um, you can direct message me at L-O-O-K-N-E-R and let us know what you're thinking. Or if you have, maybe if you have comments or questions, Liz can do it on the next show. Yes, right? absolutely. Where I would can, love to. And where can they reach you? You can reach me at underscore Liz Willis on Twitter. You can follow RSBN on Facebook at Bright Side Broadcasting, on Twitter at RSBN Network, and on RSBN.TV for our website. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you for in. having me. We really appreciate it. From Auburn, Alabama, God bless you, America, and good night.